Hi. So I don't know if you've been watching or not, but we've been trying super hard to have Talking Scared tonight. It's not been successful. It's been a lot of trials and tribulations, but we feel like we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna push forward. Okay, this is this is third time's the charm. Um, we're not gonna say fuck Facebook. We're not gonna say that. Okay, it's 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 a wonderful platform that does such quality work on so many different levels. So we're we're very grateful for Facebook and their quality product. We're not going to switch to OBS in two weeks. Fuck Lilith. <laughs> I don't think this is even Lilith at this point. I don't think Lilith even wants anything to do with, with it. Like, she's just backed off and been like, you know what? Facebook has this under control. So we don't really have to worry about it. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. Playing no games that time. Fire up your old laptop. Let's see what we can do right now. There we are! There we are! <laughs> What's going on, man? How are you? I'm good. Finally figured out how to... Oh, this is this is a pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the most uh, user-friendly format. We're, I think... Uh, congratulations, if things go according to plan, you will be the last one that we interview on this platform like this. Um, I think <laughs> we'll be in the New Horizons, hopefully. Hopefully here within two oh, weeks. Okay. Do something yeah, I've never done it on Facebook Live. live. Yeah, because this is this is nonsense, and uh, we're 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 over it. We've had enough. But anyways, oh my god, I, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's like I'm trying to find things on like because I, I can't find the same stuff I could find on my computer that I can find on my phone. Yes. Like it won't let it wouldn't show me the live video on my phone until you tagged me in it, and I was like, what the heck is going? I'm like just scrolling through your page, like where is everything? <laughs> Well, actually, funny story about that. Pages that are getting popular, they're taking away the ability to find things. Wow. Yeah. So especially especially some of the bigger names out there, like Scurry Face has been affected by it a little bit, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. can obviously correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I think they've got a little bit of hate from Facebook just based off of their popularity. And yeah. uh, other people that have been having issues with it and stuff like that. Um, but anyways, Welcome. Welcome to Talking Scared. We're through all the nonsense. I'm so grateful to have you on, man. I can't imagine how busy your schedule is right now with getting everything ready for the Terrifier 2 and all the yeah, other stuff you've got crazy. going on in your life. Um, so thank you so much for, for taking oh, You're welcome. Thanks for you know putting up with me. I'm, I suck with technology anyway, so I'm just like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Um, Trish uh, handles all of the technical aspect of this. I, I've done two episodes by myself when she was away, and they were absolute train wrecks. Um, I, I <laughs> don't feel bad, man. Don't feel bad. She gets me through these and, and makes me look like a kind of Kind of know what I'm doing. Um, oh, that's good. So we always like to start off with the uh, with the beginning of stuff. Um, you know, kind of get to know the person behind the mask a little bit, or in this case, the person behind the grease paint. Um, yeah. But uh, what uh, what was your first kind of introduction to horror in your life in general? Oh gosh, I think mine might have been Poltergeist when I was like a little kid. My my parents were having movie night with their friends, and I snuck out of my bedroom. And I, I crept in there and was watching part of it and got up to like the bedroom scene with the little boy and that scared the crap out of me with the clown. I'm like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Were you uh, instantly hooked or did it take a little while for the horror genre to grow on you? It took a little while because like my mom was a huge scaredy cat when it came to like horror films. So we didn't watch horror films in our family. My mom thought like the fall of the house of Usher was one of the scariest movies she had ever seen in her life. <laughs> And if you've ever seen that movie, it's like, come on. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I didn't really watch uh, horror films until I was a senior in high school. It okay. was when Scream 2 came out. And, like, all my friends, after we had done a show, they're all going to go see Scream 2. And they're like, Dave, come on. I'm like, I don't know. And there's, like, this one girl I liked in the cast that was going. I'm like, oh, okay, she's going. I'll, I'll go. I can't look like a chicken in front of her, so yeah. that's fun. And I had so much fun. After that, I was like, I, I just had to, you know, play catch up. When I got to college the next year, I just like rented tons and tons and tons of like horror films and started like, you know, catching up on everything, brushing up my my knowledge on everything. 
Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So obviously we're into acting, um, clearly. Um, what was <laughs> the, the, the start? When did you realize that was something you wanted to do with your life? Oh, gosh. That was, I mean, I was like doing like church theater growing up, oddly enough, considering where I am now in life. <laughs> Stuff would qualify for the, uh, for the cathedral these days. Yeah, no, no, no. Well, I, I'm, I grew up in Alabama, like I was Methodist growing up. So that, that was an interesting thing, doing plays about Jesus and all that. <laughs> yeah. But um, it, it wasn't really until like my middle school year, um, my eighth grade year, when um, I, I was like bullied a lot growing up and really shy in my middle school years. And I was I was a little bit different from everybody else because I hadn't hit puberty yet. So I was like this short little nerd with glasses and braces and a high-pitched voice. And our choral program, can't talk about some program, <laughs> <laughs> verbal dyslexia is a wonderful thing, but, yeah. um, and dog we trust, but, <laughs> but, but we, uh, that, 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 um, that winter, our choral program did, um, Mickey's Christmas Carol and I auditioned for the role of Mickey Mouse and, you know, Bob crashed in that and got the role. And we had this like night when we we're performing and everything just started going wrong on stage like like the set fell down on top of scrooge and i and stuff like that and i just started improving right there on the stage making up lines and just being funny and i had like everybody just eating out of the palm of my hand and i was like oh wow this is amazing for once everybody's laughing with me instead of at me That's i cool. like this i'm like i i think i want to do this and so I, I really started getting involved in theater after that okay um, talk about a little bit of uh, maybe some of the training and some of the different courses and stuff that you've taken that's yeah. kind of helped prone your or uh, hone. Well, I see, I can't talk either. Um, I know it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> these words, man, they're so difficult. You think I words are hard? Use your mouth words. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm think of my. We always keep telling our kids to use their words, but I think it's us that needs to really focus <laughs> using our Stupid words. Good English. Um, but anyways some of the classes and some of the different stuff that you've done to help hone your craft. Well, I um, actually didn't go to college to become a theater major. I went to college to become an elementary education major. So I didn't take the <laughs> traditional classes everybody took. I, I basically learned everything from just doing, by just being there on stage and learning from other actors. And when I moved up here to New York, I took a few little classes here or there just to basically brush up my skills. But Honestly, in those classes, I didn't really learn anything new. It was just all like, okay, this is just a great way to meet casting directors and agents and you know other people in the industry that way. So, so basically, everything I learned, I just learned from watching like film and plays and just being on stage myself. I, I, I'm a human sponge when it comes to actors and stuff like that. So, I, I guess in that way, I don't really have like a, a certain style. That, you know, some people are like Stanislavski, blah 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 blah, whatever. I, I'm just my own style. I, I adapted my own thing over the years. So I'm just me. <laughs> it's interesting that you say that, you know, as far as having your own style, your your resume is quite diverse um, with mm -hmm. some of the stuff that you've been a part of. Um, and, and for everybody out there watching, I promise we are going to get into Terrifier. <laughs> they're itching for some Terrifier and they're like, well, we're going to get there. I promise. We just got some other stuff I want to talk to them about first. Yeah. Um, so you have done everything from Nightwing, Escalation, right? You mm -hmm. are the, uh, the, the, the Joker, correct? I'm the Joker. Oh, that is so cool. That is so cool. Do you have a Joker oh, drink? Yeah. Like a little evil oh, drink? Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> That's very good. Very yeah. good. Nice. Um, uh, now the one I really want to talk about, um, the children's series, The Bravest Night. Yes. over in that. Um, yeah. Tell us about this. What, what, what exactly is uh, is The Bravest Night? <laughs> it's a, like a children's show on Hulu. They've had a few of the episodes air so far. And it, it's a pretty cool show. And, like, it's kind of, I guess, you know, cutting edge in some ways because, like, the main character has uh, gay dads. <laughs> so, it's like, it, they're like the, the, the king. It's like the, his father is the king and, like, then the king's knight. So, it's just like, oh, that's kind of cool. But it's like, it's a... Where the, the, the king's knight is telling his daughter all these uh, stories about how when he was growing up and the experiences and the lessons he learned through his uh, life experiences. 
And so it's all basically all flashback and everything like that, which is kind of cool. But um, I, I basically voice a lot of the critters that you see in these episodes. Um, basically, I think maybe one or two of my episodes have aired so far. One, uh, I was like a little squirrel. And I just kind of duh, 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 that kind of stuff. And uh, another one was like, there's it's a whole episode about this giant and all these goats. And I did all the goats. I just went in there and bad for a while. Just, Meh. That's awesome. it, was, it was fun. It was yeah, just all that just me and like and then I uh, there's another one coming up. I don't know if I can reveal yet who I am, but I'm, I'm another critter in that one too. So it's it's funny. It's like I I've done a lot of that kind of stuff where um I did another show on the Sprout Network called uh, Super Wings for like the second season. I was a lot of the characters in that for like you know. All, animals here or there sometimes you know a, a human whenever they deign to give me lines but like most of the time they're like we need a camel can you come in and do a camel i'm like okay <laughs> we'll we'll discover what that sounds like when we're there in the booth camel sound like i'm not i'm not familiar I, I can't even remember what i did it was it was crazy because this camel was taking part in this fashion show so i was basically doing like, uh, uh, uh. It was. <laughs> we we just kind of made it up as we went along. They're like, "Can you do a count?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll try." That's great, man. I did like, like an ostrich. I just made basically because like the I, I researched the sound that ostriches make, and it was just way too terrifying for kids. <laughs> and so I just made the ostrich into a, just a giant chicken, basically. <laughs> so just, <laughs> just do that all. I said, our, our daughter's learning animal sounds right now. I think that you would be her favorite person if she got to sit down. Oh, just... I can do the whole barnyard. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool, man. That is so cool. Oh, I yeah. wonder what some of the parents would think if they found out that the guy doing the voiceover for the critters is also Art the Clown. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> it's quite the dichotomy I have going on right now. I'm a silent killer, but then I also do like little voices for kid shows. So it's like, yeah, you know, I'm running the whole gauntlet there. Yeah, they they can't say that you don't have a broad resume. Oh, there's no, oh, doubt. no, not not at all, not at all. <laughs> um, so we're we're very much into haunts and um, haunted attractions. It's one of our big things. Uh, what about you? You into haunted attractions and love going? Well, I I haven't done I haven't gone to a lot of, like haunted attractions because I'm the type of person when I get scared of those things I punch. Okay. <laughs> so no, I don't no. want to be on an episode of TMZ one day. Art the clown punches out a scare actor or something like that. Because <laughs> that that's my I, you know it's that fly, fight or flight instinct. I am the fighter. <laughs> so just, the fists go flying. I'm like oh oh sorry sorry sorry. <laughs> All right. Um. So. You've had a couple roles, other, other than Art the Clown. Um, what would you say is probably your favorite role that you've got to play so far today? Oh, boy. I mean, Joker's a lot of fun. He's like my dream role. So I'm like, I would, that's that's a given. I would also say, like, um, it's the show I've done twice now. It's called The 39 Steps. It's uh, based on an Alfred Hitchcock movie. But it's, uh, it's a funny, really, it's a, they've made it into a comedy where it's because it's four actors in this show – and you have the main actor that plays the main character, like the female plays like three of the main females. And there are the two clowns that play everybody else. So I would basically play about 30 different characters in every show. And I've done it twice. So I've played probably about 60 characters in that show. <laughs> They're all like English, Irish, Scottish, all that kind of stuff. One of them is actually an English professor that's actually a German spy in disguise. Yeah, That's a lot to he's a Nazi. Talking. Oh yeah, so I had like changed my accent in mid sentence. <laughs> so it was like this was interesting. So it was it was a fun challenge. It was like one of the most exhausting shows I've ever done, but one of the most fun shows because you just get to play around a lot in it. So it's like that's a show I'll do over and over again. Very cool. And um, I, I really like the Joker. That's that's uh, that's actually my favorite villain. Um, favorite. Oh, mine too. If you were to pick, I mean, even throwing the Freddy Kruegers and Jasons and everybody else in there. Uh, without mm -hmm. a doubt, Joker's my favorite. We've actually got him right there, part of oh, the yeah. set. Oh um, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's that Trish got me. That's one of the first presents she ever got me. Was that? Ah, oh, very He's cool. On my mug too. Very really cool. <laughs> very cool. Uh, but I'm a huge yeah. fan of Joker, and um, it's it's got to be such a fun character to play. 
Oh, really, he really is. Really lose yourself in that 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 crazy yet happy and that sociopath yet guy you'd probably enjoy having a beer with kind of effect. Oh it's yeah, really weird man. It's it's an odd. It's got to be difficult to to play that role too a little bit. It is. It is. It's exhausting. <laughs> you, your, your face starts to hurt after a while, too, is all that smiling. <laughs> there's a lot of pressure when you see, I mean, you know, obviously there's been some iconic roles of the Jokers, you know, Jack Nicholson. Oh, yeah. Many. I mean, is there a lot of, you feel a lot of pressure when you take on a role like that to, to follow oh, them? Definitely. Them? Definitely. I'm, I, I basically, my, my biggest influence, I mean, I, I put a lot of the different versions of Joker into my version of Joker, but I would say my biggest influence on my version is Mark Hamill's version. Very cool. Because I, I think his is like just the best version out there. So if you're going to do a version of Joker, why not take a little bit from the best? Yeah, no, I'd agree with you. I'd agree with you. I think that's yeah. the best representation of Joker. Yeah. And well, well, I really enjoyed Heath Ledger's Joker. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think it really, it, everybody makes such a big deal over his role, and it was great. I just yeah. don't think that comparatively, and when you look at the comics and you kind of look at the, it, it didn't really feel like it was it was the Joker 100%. Right, right. That was, that was not like the Joker of the comic book. You know, not at all. Not at I all. I mean, I loved what he did with it, but I'm like, that still was not the Joker of the comic. I, I still have not seen a live action version of the Joker from the comic book. Even Jack Nicholson wasn't the Joker of the comic book. He was still, he was just Jack Nicholson being the Joker. Yeah. I, I think the closest that's come for like the comic at that time was Cesar Romero's version, because that's when, you know, that version of the Joker was very campy and cartoonish. Yeah. Yeah, and so that's, that's the thing. He, he, he's he's one of those characters you have to be able to 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 laugh with him more than more than anything else and get lost in that in, in just that jokerness. <laughs> I don't yeah. I don't really know how else to describe it. And and I agree with you. I think I think Mark Hamill that it definitely has been one of the best jokers without a doubt. Oh um, yeah, you you kind of cheer for the guy. It's just like that's what yeah. so it's like he's doing yeah. these horrible things, but you kind of cheer for him. Yeah, and I didn't feel that with 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 Ledger's Joker at all. You know, yeah. it was I was I was behind Batman, and I, that's I've never I've never been in a situation where I've watched Batman and Joker in any situation, and been yeah. behind Batman, but that one. You know, that was the only time where I was rooting for rooting for Batman, and it felt weird. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but anyways, everybody's probably done with the Joker. They're all just like, "Come on, talk about Terrifier. Stop it." <laughs> <laughs> Um, but we're, 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 we're getting there. We're, we're almost there. We're um, this Patience, young ones. Patience. We're getting there, I promise. Um, so the broad range of stuff you do, all these different types of roles. Mm -hmm. What is it like mentally to get into the role of, you know, doing the children's programming versus getting into the mindset and the role of getting ready to be Art the Clown? How different is the preparation behind that? It's really not as different as you would think, because I'm like I'm one I'm not like one of those like method actors I guess you could say. It's like as soon as I can understand the character in my head, and I've basically discovered the voice of the character, which is weird to say since art doesn't talk, but that's always just been something that's gone on for me. For like any character I play, I I discover the voice, and the character just kind of builds itself off the voice, like in the mannerisms and stuff like that. So. It's been basically easy for me. I, I just research a lot of stuff right beforehand. And I, I just like for art, I just kind of pulled from like my love of silent film actors and um, also great horror villains and also the Joker as well. And I just kind of just mashed all that together in my head. It's like how I looked at it is I, I looked at art as being a evil version of Mr. Bean or basically like the bastard child of Harpo Marx and Freddy Krueger. And I put that in my mind and I can just automatically go to that place when I need to. You know, and it's interesting now thinking back on the terrifier and, and how you played that role, you can see elements of all of that, even, you know, moments of Mr. Bean, you know, when you're riding the tricycle around in the circle and just, <laughs> you know, yeah, there, there, there's Mr. Bean. And then there's other yeah. times where, you know, you, you see the Joker when and the the dancing in the woman's skin. I could see that being something that the Joker would do as well, <laughs> just kind of being like, ah, <laughs> look what I did. Um, yeah. So it's cool. It's cool to see to to be able to talk about talk to the man that's put that character together 
and the sources that he's used for it and, and see different spots where he's done that. It's really cool, man. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, so we're there. Yeah. We're, we're, we're talking Terrifier now, guys. We're, we're, we're full going into it. Um, so, we're there. <laughs> so now this – you weren't – you didn't play uh, – so there was a, a short film in 2011, right? Correct. That was the 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 original original Terrifier. Um, mm-hmm. Kind of kind of gave a little bit of a uh, an idea. It was the first time that that Art was spotted. Wasn't wasn't you playing him this time, right? No, that was not me playing that. I I only played Art so far in Terrifier, the film. Cool. cool. Now, was, uh, um, the original Art was uh, Damien's friend Mike Gianelli. He was just like one of Damien's friends. Like, hey buddy, can you be in my film for me? He's like, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, and he just much, don't want to come back. <laughs> is there much correlation between the between the two films? I mean, as far as is there, I mean, obviously you don't need to watch the short film to be able to watch Terrifier and enjoy it. Right. But are you missing anything if you don't go back and watch that short film? I don't think so, really. No, because it's like it's it's basically Terrifier is basically a reboot of it all. Yeah, it's just you know, it's like. Yeah, it's like, okay, like, I look at, like, All Hallows Eve and stuff like that. That was more like a test run for the character. Because that, that's before, like, Damien even knew that he wanted to do a whole film series on that character. He was, Art was just kind of there, in you know, he was just, like, here or there. And he wasn't the main, supposed to be the main character of that. And it's just people liked the character so much. It's like, okay, well, we need to actually make this into a full-fledged character now. Okay. So that's that's basically what we did with Terrifier. So Terrifier is really the first true Art the Clown film that's meant to be an Art the Clown film. Very cool. Very cool. And it uh, it excels in every possible way. I I remember when I first started watching it and I was like, oh, okay, so the clown doesn't talk at any point in time. That's that's different, but all right. And but it, it all works together. It, it it's it's beautiful how it just kind of you don't you don't need art to say anything. Um, during the films, he does plenty of talking in other ways. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. But what is, uh, what is your favorite part of of Art the Clown? Just the character itself. Oh gosh, my my, my favorite thing about him is just his mischievousness. How he just loves what he does, and he just kind of revels in it. It's just fun for him, and I I, I think that's what I, I love about the character the most. He he enjoys what he's doing. It's just it's you know, he's not killing for revenge or anything like that. He's killing because it just amuses him <laughs> and it, there doesn't it's seem to fun. be a way to, to to escape it either you know once no. you've been picked you've been picked and it doesn't really matter you you're gonna you're, you're gonna die <laughs> yeah yeah he's got his you know like once you know he's got his target set on you you're 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 basically screwed yes. <laughs> um so now you, there's a lot of different ways in which art the clowns presented um throughout the movie and it's it's an incredible job that you do acting with it. I mean, so what's it like to go from from riding the tricycle, you know, and goofing off and having fun and just laughing and kind of playing around and taking selfies to, <laughs> you know, then flipping it around and having what is some really brutal murder scenes in this movie? What's that like mentally having to be able to flip that switch on and off like that? Uh- it was fine. <laughs> I, I guess because I'm already in that headspace of the character. Because he, I, 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 I guess with him, I, I can just get in that headspace where he's just having fun with what he's doing. So I just have fun doing it myself. So I, I, it just doesn't get to me that way where I'm like, oh my god, this is fucked up. And I'm just like, no, it's like, wait, this is fun. Sawing, sawing, sawing. Wee dee dee dee. Make the character so awesome. So, so speaking of sawing, 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 um, when the when when you first laid eyes, we get the weedy dee dee dee. So when you first come across the script and you read, and I don't know what else to call it other than the coochie cutter scene. Um, yeah. I, Up at the crack of dawn. <laughs> yeah. Um. What what went through your head? I mean, there had to be some some. Really, this is what we're doing. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. That that like when I first read that, I was like, "Holy crap, we're really gonna do this?" It's like that's that's pretty graphic. Yeah. Wow. And it, goes, 
it goes on so yeah. much longer than what you think it's going to happen. Oh, my God. Even in my head, I thought it was going to be like most films where, you know, they you basically just see the first cut and they cut away. And I'm like, oh, no, we're actually going to film me cutting through this thing and intestines oh, yeah. spilling out and all that. It's like, good God. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. And make her best friend watch while you do the whole thing. Oh, as yeah. You as you do. That's rough. That it's was, a family I mean, picture. I've never seen <laughs> I've watched a shitload of horror movies. I've yeah. seen some of the goriest stuff out there that there is to see, I think. Um, I've watched some stuff that, you know, I'm ashamed, you know, I don't really, you know, like some human centipede level of bad movie. Oh, oh. Yeah, exactly right. I've seen some, I've seen some gnarly stuff. <laughs> and, and the coochie cutter scene made me kind of, I was like, oh God, just thought that's enough. And why does your friend have to watch? That's not, that's not polite yeah. at all. That is that is a rough <laughs> rough way to go. Um, yeah. What is your favorite scene in the movie that you would want to share? If you had to pick one scene, other than the oh two my favorite, <laughs> yeah my my favorite scene I would say like non kill wise would be the diner scene. I mean th though there are, are kills in that scene, but that that was just such a fun scene to do. Yeah, I, I think in that scene you, it really just sums up who Art is from the get go. It's like you. Yes. You don't really have to go into who he is. You just see everything about the guy in that one scene, his creepiness, his his humorous side, his then his flat-out just sadistic murderous side at the end when he's killing the owner and the employees. It's, it's a, such a great scene. Yes. Yes, it is. And um, the way – like, it's not enough for him just to get the kill. He mm -hmm. has to have that, that mental game, that, that fucking with you before it happens. Yeah. And it's, it's it's awesome, and you nailed it, man. You just I, oh, I really man. really want to give you a round of applause on it, man. I it's it was phenomenal. I, I enjoyed. I, I have I don't remember a movie, um, in a while that I, I've been entrapped with from beginning to end, mm -hmm. and, and it really was. And I want to talk about the ending a little bit. Um, so if we can pry, and I don't I don't want to take away anything or dive into something mm -hmm. that we don't need to dive in, so if it's a, hey, we can't talk about that, that's perfectly fine. Um, but the ending, he kind of seems to snap back to life. Mm -hmm. Can I ask what exactly Art the Clown is? Uh, I don't see how he could have possibly <laughs> survived. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you'll find out in part two. I a little bit more of that. Yeah. I, I will say part two starts off right where part one left off. Awesome. Awesome. Very so, cool. Yeah. You, you'll, you'll, we'll, we'll start off with all that. So you'll, you'll see him responding to, because I, I like to think that he didn't even know he was going to come back from the dead. He did seem surprised by it. Yeah. <laughs> That, that's something, you know, I, that's something we're going to explore a little bit more, I think, just ourselves, too. It's like, how, how can we play this scene and stuff like that? But I, that, that's 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 one thing, like, Damien and I are still talking about ourselves. It's like, did he know that he was going to be able to come back, or did he not know? I, I, I'm obviously not involved in the creative aspect of this at all, but I, to me, yeah. it felt like a complete surprise on his end. Like, he just didn't. He didn't realize yeah. it. And then when he was there, he was just right back into the, oh, yay, more murder. <laughs> like, I'm back, baby. <laughs> Very cool. Hey, you got to um, die. <laughs> now, Art the Clown has has a huge following. A very, very yeah. popular character. And considering what he does, um, is it ever a little weird, you know, <laughs> when people are like, oh, my God, Art the Clown, you're the best. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's. Getting, I'm, I'm getting a little bit more used to it now, but uh, starting out, yeah, that was kind of like, wow, thank you, thank you, because uh, like, I mean, from, from the get go, we didn't expect this film to get the reactions it was going to get, anyways, from everybody. We just thought it was just going to be a few of the fans from All Hallows Eve might like it, and that's about it. We didn't really expect it to be successful at all, so it's it's been a surprise to all of us too. So. But I'm starting to get a little bit more used to it. I'm, I'm, it's, it happened the other night. We were doing some uh, location scouting uh, out in New Jersey, and I'm standing there in the location, and this one person just recognizes me, even though I'm like – I had an Art of the Clown shirt on and stuff like that, so this like girl's just like looking over at me constantly. I'm like, oh, she must think I'm cute. Cool. Then she comes over to me, and she's like, are you him? 
I'm like, him who? And she's like, him, him. And she points to the shirt. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so it, it, it's, that, that's what's kind of weird. I'm like, wow, this is, it, it's it's happening more and more now. Like I, I go out, especially if I have like something with Terrifier on, people talk about it. They're like, oh my God, I love that movie and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's kind of cool. So it, it's, it's slowly starting to sink in, like how, how big it's starting to get with everybody now. But it's it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Very good. Very good. So before we try and pry a little bit of Terrifier 2 out of you, um, mm -hmm. five scenarios, all right? And this is something new. We've not tried with any other guests before. I was supposed to tell Trish about it, and I forgot. Um, but this, you're going to love it, I promise. <laughs> um, so, so five scenarios, death matches, all right? One-on-one, -on -one, death matches. Who comes out on top? The first one, Freddy mm -hmm. versus Jason. Fight to the real death, real death. It depends where it take, takes place. Okay. No, not, not takes in place. We're, we're in reality. Oh, was, we're in reality? Then I would say probably Jason. Yeah. 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 You can't, you, I don't know. I don't feel like Freddy can use Dreamland to, to kill. I don't yeah. think he can even kill Jason in Dreamland, really. Yeah. I don't know. But I, I think in, like, real world, like, you know, Jason basically just has to tear him apart, and then, like, Freddy can't reform himself that way. So, like, All in right. Dreamland, he could, but, yeah. So, yeah, I think Jason would win. Okay. So, Jason, I like that answer. Um, Michael Myers mm -hmm. versus, from the remake of The Hills Have Eyes, um, the uh, the squad that attacked the trailer, just those particular brand of mutants, those three or four that attacked, up against Michael Myers in a fight to the death, who comes out on top? Oh, boy, that's a tough one. No, <laughs> but he's Michael Myers, so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would probably say it would probably be the mutants that would win that, just because of sheer numbers. Okay. Could overwhelm them that way, yeah. All right, all right. So we're going to go a little little different here, a little different here. Um, predator, all right, mm -hmm. whichever, not not a super predator that they came out with in the new movies, and I'm still not sure how yeah. to look that. Just regular predator. Just regular predator. Versus Iron Man. Oh, wow. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, my God. That's a good one. Oh, my God. I, I have to think about that one. Because, you know, <laughs> they both have, like, their their own little bits of, like, technology and stuff like that they can utilize to get them one, one up on each other. Ooh. Ooh. I'm going to say it's going to be a close one. I, I, I'm going to say Tony Stark comes out on top. Yeah, I, I I hate to agree with you because I'm a big Predator fan, and I and I want mm -hmm. I want to say Predator. I think Predator does some serious damage, and mm -hmm. um, I, I think I think Tony would do something where he realizes, you know, like kind of like in the first one where you know, the the heat vision, and he would use the suit as a decoy. He, you know, has a suit going off doing something. He'd come back with a surprise attack. You know, cover himself in mud or something like that, and kill him from behind all right all right i, I could see it i could see it um yeah so, so so the fourth one and i really think you're going to like the last one um so the fourth one um terminator original t100 arnold schwarzenegger mm -hmm. terminator against the alien queen terminator gets no guns this is a hand-to-hand -hand street fight to the death can terminate oh alien queen, queen. Alien Queen by far. She's got the acid. Yeah, that is true. It would just melt him right down. I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think yeah. about that. The Terminator wouldn't stand a chance. That'd be yeah, bad. Yeah, she's got that tail. She's got that acid. She could take out the legs and makes him immobile and just bam. He's done all for. Right. All right, so the last one. All right, and you're really going to have to mm -hmm. think about this one, all right? Moto the Clown. Right, you, you, you're familiar with Moto, right? No, I'm not. Scurry face Moto. All right, so. Oh, that okay. That okay. That clown. Okay, yeah. Okay. All right, all right. So Moto the I'll clown. I'm saying movies. <laughs> Moto the clown versus Art the clown. Fight to the death. <laughs> oh, Art, duh. Sluggish <laughs> <laughs> and full of Moto juice, so he couldn't. He'd be. He'd be no threat to Art at all. Oh all God, right. no, no. Especially since I know what and who Art is, so I'm like, yeah. No contest there. 
<laughs> well, very cool. Sorry, dude. Thanks for uh, and thank you for playing along with that, man. We have, we have oh, yeah, that was on. fun. I like that. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. So, uh, so as as we as we're nearing the end here a little bit, we got to try and get a little Terrifier two out of you. Number one, holy shit! At the fan response to the support for Terrifier two, how did that oh, make it's been you? amazing? That was crazy. That's fantastic. Like uh, we we've already made like three hundred percent of our goal now on on our Indiegogo campaign. I mean that's that's helping us out so much because like I I you know I, I think people assume that that we have like a huge budget for this, which we don't. So every little bit that we're able to make on this campaign is really helping us because like uh, we definitely have a bigger budget than we did for the first one, but we're also doing so much more in this one. We were a lot more ambitious with this one. There's a lot of the set pieces. We're having to like build some of our own sets and stuff like that this time because everything we used in the first one was real locations. This one, we actually have to build some things and do some crazy things that are going to cost money so like every little bit that we're able to raise right now is going to help us exponentially you know make this really just like the the sequel it needs to be it's like i i mean i think sometimes when you have a limited budget it makes you become a little bit more creative with things yeah. and i i think that's going to help us in some ways as, as much as it sucks having a smaller budget but at the same time it's like yeah we, I look at what we were able to accomplish on Terrifier 1 with the, the very, very small budget we had on that one. So, But like I said, every every little bit we're, we're able to raise right now is just going to help us out so much and yeah. maybe help us hire, hire some of the actors we want to have in this as well. Very cool. And, I mean, it was it – was... <laughs> It's just nice to to see when a when when a project like that really connects with the target audience. Yeah. In yeah. that way that they just say, "I mean, fuck your goal. Here's three times what you need. Go make a oh, killer." Oh, it's amazing. Movie. That's so cool. That's oh, be- Damien <laughs> did not expect that at all. He he was like, I remember when we were just talking about like what what like amount we were gonna set for our goal. And I, I said like, well, let's at least set it for a hundred thousand. He's like, oh, I doubt if we'll even be able to make that. Because like when he did an Indiegogo campaign for Terrifier One, I think they maybe made like four thousand dollars. So it's just like he he was like thinking that was gonna happen again. I'm like, dude, I think I think you're gonna be surprised. Yeah. Um. So, Terrifier Two. Mm-hmm. What can you what what can you talk about? What hey, a little taste of what we can expect to see. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I, I guess because he, he said a few things in the description of the film. I'm like, we're, this one's going to be have a lot more of a narrative element to it. And we're, we're bringing in a, a good protagonist this time. I, I think we're, we're setting up his Laurie, Laurie Strode in a way, I think, in this one. So, or his Sidney Prescott. Or where he, what, you know, he, uh, as I like to say, the Joker needs his Batman. And I think we're going to have that Batman like character oh, de- cool. starting to be developed in this film. So that's I think, great. you know, the first one was kind of like or, uh, the art's origin. This is going to be this character's origin, how they become the hero and stuff like that. So it's it's going to be fun. It's it's, it's going to go some crazy, crazy places. And it takes on, place on Halloween again. Okay. So, yeah. Very good. Um, <clears throat> anything about this film that you're uh, super excited about or, or... – you know, I mean, I, I know there's only so much you can really talk about. And I, oh, there's so know. much that I'm excited about this script. I, I that, that, that was like the difference between reading the first script and reading this script. Like when I read the first script, there were a few scenes I was like, oh, that's going to be so much fun. The, and I, I'll giggle a little bit. This one, I was just giggling profusely throughout the script. Going, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This scene's going to be. Oh, this scene's going to be great. Oh, this scene's going to be great. Oh, this scene. I, I think Damien outdid himself on this script. It's, it, it's 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 good. It's such a good script. I'm so proud of him. Very cool. Very cool. And I cannot wait to see it. I am I, I am just so fucking excited. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I like I said, I was so I was just so pleasantly surprised with the first one because you just don't know for sure what it is you're getting into at first, and then yeah. as it progresses, it's just it's entertaining from start to finish, and it's so hard to find a movie that's entertaining from start to finish. And you guys pulled yeah. off the Terrifier, and I, I can't you. wait to see what you got coming on the Terrifier too, man. It's going to be phenomenal. Well, we're going to keep on entertaining you guys. That's that's something we that's that's the the most important thing I think we're that we need to keep doing with this is 
having fun with it and making it a fun film to watch in itself. I think, I think that's what's been lacking in a lot of the horror films recently. They've forgotten how to have fun with it. Yeah. I mean, there have been a few that I, I've had so much fun watching, like The Babysitter or The Final Girls or Tragedy Girls or um, Happy Death Day. Those are fun to watch. You know, like, no, I, I didn't know Terrifiers like that. You know, there's so, some of the other ones are just so dang serious now. It's yeah. like, yeah, you can still have yeah. the serious elements to it, but also have some fun with it, too. It's okay for the villain to laugh. You know, it's okay yeah. to, to see those elements in it and, and, you know, to be, I, I don't know, I, I'm with you. You know, I think you the, the horror industry is taking a, a real bad turn sometimes towards that. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see a little bit more of that Ash versus Evil Dead <laughs> uh, mixture yes. of horror and stuff like that. Because it's, it's grotesque and awful at times, but it's also some of the funniest stuff out there. You know, oh I like God, yeah. different elements like that. It's nice to see the, the horror industry going back to it a little bit. Oh, me too. It, I, I think like horror and comedy can go together so well. Yes. Because like yes. The, 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 those little bits of comedy in those horror films, it, it, it takes the, the audience on a better roller coaster ride, in my opinion, because, you know, those those funny light elements help ease people, put them in a false sense of calm. And then you hit them again with something bad, and just you keep doing that. It's just, it's a better ride, I think, that way than just Absolutely. constantly just being the downer the whole entire time. So we got a question from the audience, and you don't have to answer it um, if it's one of those that you can't. Um, but they mm -hmm. want to know if art will ever have any dialogue. No. Art. All right. So there you go, Sean. No, nope. no, no. I don't think he needs it. <laughs> I don't think he needs it. And you know, I, I like. I like no, I don't think so. I don't. So that's uh, that's going to be yeah. bringing us. Some... He he speaks through his actions. Quite well, quite well. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so that's going to be bringing us up towards the end. But as we do with every single episode of Talking Scared, uh, we always like to turn the floor over to the guest and let them give out any last little shout outs they want to give out, any shameless plugs they want to plug, anything they want to say at all whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> we always like to turn the floor over and give our guests the chance to uh, close it out. So, David, thank you so much for being on with us tonight. It was thank an you. absolute pleasure to get to know you a little bit and get to talk to you. And, sir, the floor is yours. All right. Well, thank you for having me, too. And I uh, thank you to all of you fans as well for you know, both tuning in and just supporting our films from the get-go. I mean, like this, is, we are where we are because of the fans. We didn't have a huge studio system behind us like doing all this publicity. We had very little publicity for Terrifier. So we are where we are because it's the fans that were getting the word of mouth out about the film itself. And so I just, I, I just truly appreciate all you guys for just being there with us through this journey. That's why we want to make this film to be even bigger and better because we want to give you guys something even more. So we're, ex we're so excited about getting it out to you guys. So, um, yeah, um, we're still doing the Indiegogo campaign right now. So you can go on Indiegogo, look up Terrifier 2. We're on there. We're doing, I think, about six more days of it. So yeah. if you haven't already pledged, I mean, even $5, we appreciate $5. Anything is it's, it's so well appreciated. And we have some pretty awesome perks in there, too. You know, so you got some incentives, you know, if you want to contribute and stuff like that. So please do, please do. Killed by Art the Clown? Oh, there's like thanks, special thanks. Uh, there's like mugs and stuff like that. But yeah, like some of the bigger perks that are a little bit more expensive or like, you know, you get killed by me on screen and stuff like that. Or you can be an extra in the film. So yeah, it's, it's kind of kind of cool. It's the kind of cool perks and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm like, we want to do something for you guys as much as possible. So that's why we want we want to do this film for you guys. It's because... We, we have so much more to tell about art. <laughs> yeah, and also, if you want to follow me, you can follow me on, like, all, like, major platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, under some variation of David Howard Thornton. So I'll be there. But, yeah, just, again, thank you so much for just the support. I mean, it means so much to all of us. Awesome. Awesome, man. Well, thank you for being a part tonight. Guys, you heard me. Um, the uh, Indiegogo account, um, you absolutely, there's six days left. Go show them some support. Go show them some love. And, David, I lied to you. I I'm sorry. I lied to you. We do have <laughs> one more question. 
Okay. And, all right, and this does come directly from your scurry face family. Uh oh. Tyler would like <laughs> to know what uh -huh. it will take for you to say roll tide live tonight. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Fuck roll tide. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did say roll tide, just had a little little precursor in front of it. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> so, anyways, David again. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Go like and support him. Go follow David Howard Thornton wherever you can find him on Facebook, YouTube, wherever he's out there. Go find him. Go follow him. Go to Indiegogo. Support Terrifier 2. David, thank you so much. That's it for thank tonight. You. Be seeing you guys not next Monday. We're going to take a week off and see if we can get a better platform. We'll be back <laughs> after that. Hopefully a lot better and a lot harder for you guys. So we'll see you next Monday. David, go kick some ass in Terrifier 2. We look forward to seeing you destroy some people in beautiful ways. Oh, will do. <laughs> Thank you, man.